Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got most of the usual suspects. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott Bossman, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. I am not completely stir crazy yet, although I feel like at times, um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But the weather's been nice getting out. It's all good. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you doing? I'm happy to be here. It's good to see you. Good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm doing really well. Yeah, everything's good, man. Can't complain. All right, last, but certainly not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school stripper, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Oh, wait, I forgot to mention investorninjas.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. By the by, the why time you even get this recording, he'll probably have three more domains. So don't worry about it. Mark, how's it going? I'm good. You can tell that the, the quarantine is getting to my brain. It's getting mushy. <laughs> You're getting soft, huh? I'm getting it's getting soft. It's getting mushy. I'm not sleeping great. And I'll tell you why I'm not sleeping well. Two words. Tiger King. Yeah, and I, th- and I I feel like today's podcast is going to be all about that freaking documentary because it is that good. So if you have not watched Tiger King yet, then maybe don't tune out just yet. Wanna, don't tune out yet. Don't tune out yet because we're going to talk about some land investing stuff first. We will then transition in to our Tiger King discussion and let you know beforehand when you should drop off if you've not seen Tiger King, the documentary. So to begin with, we want to discuss where we are at in the current state of the economy with our land investing businesses. Tate Litchfield, how are things going? Things are going well. Uh, You know, it's been interesting. You know, I get this question a lot and when everything started getting a little bit unstable and there was a lot of talk and the market started dropping off and and people started panicking, I was expecting to see something. I was expecting to see a big number of defaults. And I'd be lying if I said I haven't heard from some of my existing note customers, but I haven't had a single person say they needed to default on property. I have had several people, um, reach out and we've decided to go half payments for three months, just kind of to be good, uh, good stewards. And, and we appreciate them as, as customers. And so we want to take care of them in their times of need. But for the most part, I haven't seen this sharp decline in anything. I mean, we're selling land. We sold four properties yesterday. We're buying land. We're not the only ones doing this. And I guess rather than focus on myself, I want to talk about some of my students, if that's okay, Mark. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about them. How are they doing? So, I mean, th- there's concern, right? Anybody who's getting into this business is a little bit concerned. But I, st- I spoke with Kashaw yesterday, and uh, he had a fantastic day, 7K in sales. You know, that, that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of. I spoke with uh, Zach. What was it Saturday, Mark, that we talked to him? Zach, yeah. He bought, remember that deal he did? He was like a $2,800 property, right? On a lake, forested. And he sold it, or he's got it under contract for 35000 cash within 24 hours. So the land business is going strong. And he's one of many. I mean, I've gotten so many emails and Uh, For those of you who are listening and aren't aware, we do a weekly report within the coaching program where everybody reports kind of their numbers so we can keep an eye on the way things are going. People are buying, people are selling, they're hiring. It's a good time to be a land investor. So I don't want to jinx myself or anything, so I'm knocking on wood, but 
I've seen no changes in the business and that's kind of what I'm after. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, how about you? We've had a good couple of weeks as well. Uh, probably the best three weeks of the year, uh, in these last three weeks, which is pretty crazy. Um, so it's been consistent, uh, consistent sales as the weeks go on, uh, Buying land, as Tate said, business as usual, buying land, selling land at a higher frequency, and uh, people want it. People are wanting land. Um, so as far as default rate, uh, I've had one lady uh, email me asking me if we could put a hold on just this month's payment. Uh, it was a $99 a month note. I said, sure, we'll put a hold on and let's revisit the situation next month. Uh, otherwise, uh, I've had no one contact me uh, to put a hold on their note, asking for a decrease in payments, anything like that. Um, now it's early and that may change, but as far as, you know, the last three weeks, I think all of us went into this with a little bit of trepidation, not knowing what would happen. And, and I'm, I'm thankful for my land business for sure. Yeah. You know, you say it's early and I'm going to refute that. And the reason is, Please do. and we can, we can argue about it. Um, is that once it first hit, that's when you're going to have the highest amount of fear and uncertainty. And the stock market reacted that way. Then all of a sudden you've got the CARES Act, you've got um, the Paycheck Protection Program, and all of those things are in the works. But what's it, 10 million people filed for unemployment? No one's gotten a check yet. So I would, I would assume that the next few weeks will be better as people start getting checks. As this thing continues, we do see signs of uh, a flattening and things getting back to, I mean, I don't know about normal, but things getting better. And you see the stock market as of today, of this recording on April 7th, rebounding in anticipation of these things getting better. So I would make the argument that we're sort of past that point where the worst is yet to come. Um, but I could be wrong. I mean, does anybody disagree? Oh, I think that's a great point. I, uh, you know, I think uh, you're exactly right. I think it has the, uh, it's been consistent these last few weeks and this was maybe the roughest the roughest time period. So I can definitely see that rationale. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, I'll just make an assumption, Mimi Schmidt, being a terrorist hunter, are people afraid to even contact you about reworking their notes? Or are they just paying you because they just feel safer doing that? I had one woman asked to pay 50% this month, but everything else is ops usual. Um, Peter, was to go over my coaching students, Peter had his first couple sales and he thought the person had just gone AWOL and that he'd lost him and was happily surprised that the guy made his first payment. So he closed it and thought he lost him, but the guy actually came back. So he was very happy. Horst Pock, who was so worried about selling from overseas, thinking his name was wrong and his LLC was wrong. Nope, he just marketed more, had his first couple sales. Um, uh, Landon and Faria, they doubled, doubled their marketing and now are trying to uh, stay above water, dealing with all the new leads, hiring new people. So their business is growing. Um, so my students are all doing well. I closed, or I had a woman call me this morning and say she wants to close on a deal on Friday. So uh, everything's good. I'm, the only thing I've noticed is, is that I've got more offers for people to pay cash. People have more cash. And I, I, stimulus, stimulus hasn't come in yet, right? And the stimulus is to stimulate the economy. Economy. Those checks are for people to go out and spend that money, right? So I'm hoping that will be the case. But I've had a lot more cash offers in the last month. So. Yeah, it, it could be inflation fears where today's dollar is worth more than tomorrow's dollar. And they're just like, I want to get rid of this cash. Yeah. It's not going to be worth as much. I don't know. Is um, home more that? And they're home more on the internet more? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the technician, Eric Peterson, how are the things with you? 
and your and your students even. I, I know the Mogensons just quadrupled their passive. Yes, as a matter of fact, they were going to be one of my examples here. They've had a bunch of sales recently and uh, are doing very well uh, over these past couple weeks. Um, you know, for our business, um, it's pretty much business as usual. I would say. Um, I've mentioned this before. I think I've had two or three different uh, customers reach out and ask for uh, loan modifications. Uh, my policy has been let them reduce their payment by up to 50% for the next one to two months, and then we can reevaluate. Um, so I've done that for those couple of people, but um, I really haven't had that many people reach out for it. Um, I have also had some cash sales uh, recently um, and definitely lots of interest in land. Um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of different leads, um, people wanting to go out and visit the properties and people saying that, you know, they're just waiting for some funds to come in from various sources, whether that's a job or, or something else. Um, so I feel, you know, pretty good about at least the next couple of weeks ahead that, that things still look okay. I do think that um, if this continues for too long, um, we will see maybe a little bit more trouble in terms of defaults or potential people asking for loan modifications um, just because they're not working. You know, I mean, they could get these stimulus checks, they could, you know, get help here and there. But I think that, um, you know, depending on the, types of jobs, you know, our, our customers are currently doing, um, they can be pretty severely impacted by what's going on. If, if they have no way to work from home, I mean, that, that can definitely be an impact on their income. So um, we'll see where that goes. But, you know, ultimately, I'm not really concerned about it. Um, if, if we have to do loan modifications, we can do that. If they're going to default, we still have options after that. So, um, you know, I'm just, uh, I guess, going with the flow for the moment. Okay, great. Scott Todd. You know, Mark, uh, I get- How are things going I for get, you? Uh, you know, I get the, um, I get the ability to, um, to kind of see a little bit behind the scenes, right? Like I get to see some analytics and stuff that normally people don't really get to see. And I get to share them, like I get to see them at scale. So, you know, what I'm talking about is, is land moto, for example. And, you know, it's interesting to see, you know, when we send out that email blast every Sunday for the buyers list, man, I got to tell you something over the last month, we've seen a steady increase of the number of uh, page visits as a result of that email blast, right? More people are clicking on the link. Just to give you some ideas of like people searching for land, users, the number of users that are hitting Land Moto is up uh, about 1% over the last 28 days, but in the last seven days, 11%. Okay, so the number of users are up 11% in the last seven days. The number of sessions, you know, that the people are hitting, again, 11%. The time on the site, the time that people are spending on the site in the last week is up 6.3%. Uh, and, you know, when you think about that over like the last month, for example, the last month people have been spending more time on the site. For the last 28 days, uh, the average time on the site is up by eight and a half percent. And like the number of active users is just through the roof again, about 12%. So, you know, obviously there's, there's some interest in land. So people are searching for land, they're buying land. Like, uh, I'm telling you what lead leads are blowing up. Uh, I think in the, I think yesterday alone, we added 11, 11, uh, leads into our, uh, pipe drive account people interested in land, you know, asking for phone numbers. Normally you don't see that on, on an ad response. What's your phone number? I got to talk to you. I've seen emails come through of people saying, Hey, uh, I want to buy this property. I mean, I'm talking about properties that maybe aren't the fastest sellers either. They, they want to buy it. They're, they're asking for 90 days, same as cash, which we give them anyway, asking for 90 days, same as cash, because guess what? They're like, man, I'm getting some money. 
So either it's the, it's the U.S. Treasury sending out money. There's money flowing from somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it is, but there's money flowing, and people are looking to buy land with it. They're, they're investing. And I'd say it's a lot like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it is an asset that you own, right? Like it's not paper. You can physically go touch it. It's not going away. It's not going anywhere. I don't know what else you, you can buy. That's literally not going anywhere. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not driven by the economic earnings of the day, like stocks are. No, I, I 100% agree with you. And that's really, really positive news. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, is now a good time for me to even start in the land business? You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family to learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with Dude Buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, and they'll walk you through your different options and give you their analysis of whether or not they think it's a good time for you personally to get started in the land business based on what your current situation is. But I can tell you with 100% confidence, now is probably the best time ever to be getting into the land business. And if you don't want to do the land business, that's fine by me. But now is the best time ever to be getting into some side hustle where you can start building your passive income whatever it may be with some type of real asset in real estate. I would just argue like, why do you want to deal with a tenant, toilets, termites, trash? So, you know, who wants to deal with evicting a tenant, for example, and the emotional pieces of that are contractors. So we got a one-time sale. We have a recurring income every single month, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. And arguably you got the best person in the world taking up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, and efficiently in Scott Todd. Um, so again, go to landgeek.com forward slash training because they are sponsoring our uh, podcast today. They've been very generous. So please do we that. We have the best sponsor, don't we? We really do. We really do. So, okay. Now is the point in the time of the podcast. If you've not seen Tiger King, go listen to something else. Go, go on a different podcast. Um, maybe... Just stop it here and go to Netflix and start watching Tiger King and then come back to the podcast after you've binged it because it is that good. It is, it is the, the show for quarantine. It, so for those of you that don't even know what Tiger King is, then we'll quickly just describe it to you. Um, Eric Peterson, what is Tiger King? It's this show putting about him on the show crazy spot. man and his tigers. His boyfriends. <laughs> Wait, it's lots, not just... Lots of Wait, drama. Here. It's not just one man and his tigers. There's True. a lot of people and their tigers. Right? Ligers. It, 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 the most surprising thing about that whole show, whatever, is the fact that there are more tigers or wildcats, or whatever the stat was, in the United States, then live in the wild. That in blew captivity. me away. Yeah. In yeah, captivity, that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's this whole subculture of exotic animal lovers, but, you know, but especially big cats. And there's a few players that are, like, really big in this subculture. And this documentary takes you through 10 episodes of their journey with the most flamboyant of the characters being a guy named Joe Exotic. So now if you have not watched the show, please stop the pod, please stop your podcast now. We do not want to spoil it for you because we are going to discuss in detail a few things about the show. And if you're listening to it and you've, and you've already finished Tiger King, then continue listening and please Go on the official Land Geek Motivation Wealth Creation Group and leave your comments. We will be putting up some polls in there as well, I'm sure, because, uh, or I don't know, maybe we're spoiling it for people. We'll do something. Just email supportthelandgeek.com um, your take, like whatever. But my take on this thing is it's the greatest show ever. Tate, 
I was going to say, just send us your memes. That's what we really want to see. Is send us, send your, us your memes. memes. That, send us your Tiger King memes. Because there's some yeah. really good ones going around. Yeah. Okay, so that, that'll be like the, the, okay. So whoever sends or whoever puts into the official motivation wealth creation group, the best Tiger King meme, we're going to give you um, a free investor's toolkit. Now, if you already have the toolkit, we'll give you a credit to use towards flight school or coaching or software. That's, like that's sure $1,997 value. For a sure meme? PG, though. For a meme? No way. Yes. It can be anything. <laughs> I mean, it's, not, it's not like we got kids in the group, do we? All right, fine. Should we do a family-friendly meme? There's some bad Is ones this, out The there. show's not even right, family-friendly. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh Eric, did you let your sons watch this show? Absolutely not. See, it's the, the show's not family friendly, therefore the memes. Come on. Okay, fine. If then, you know, simply hide like our feed for a while if you're worried about seeing memes. Or just don't let your kids go in the group and see the memes. My kids. Mark, that's, Mark, that's, think, that's the way to do it. I think you're doing this wrong. I think you're doing this wrong. Are you are you, did you just say email them to support at thelanegeek.com? No, 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 no. Post them in the, in the motivation group. Oh, 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 I also think that you should like have them post it on uh, Instagram and use the hashtag the land geek. Okay. Put them on Instagram, hashtag the land geek. That's, yeah. that's great. That's, yeah. that's really good. Okay. Thinking. Yeah. See, but let us, let us, but send us a link to it. Instagram. Right. Right. Okay, first question, Tate Litchfield, did Carol kill her husband? Yes. <laughs> Scott Bossman, did Carol kill her husband? Affirmative. Mimi, did Carol kill her husband? Oh, yeah. Eric Peterson, did Carol kill her husband? She probably did and got away with it. <laughs> Scott Todd, did Carol kill her husband? Let's just say that there were some happy tigers. Oh, big cat rescue. We all agree she killed her husband. I think she killed him. I think she killed him. My so, opinion, by the way, I just cover myself because I don't want to get sued uh, by Carol. I'm, it's my opinion. It's opinion, yeah. N next question, Mimi Schmidt. We'll start with you because it's your question. Is Carol as bad as Joe Exotic? This with this big cat rescue. But she there's still big cats in cages, the correct? Mother Teresa, right? But is she? She doesn't pay her people. She's got the whole petting farm. Is she just as bad as Joe? What do you think? I don't know. I'm only halfway through at this point. I don't know. I mean, she killed okay. Her. She killed. But you definitely think she killed her husband. Tate is is she as oh, bad she, as Joe Exotic? Yeah, she's worse. Ooh, she's worse. Yeah. yeah. How is she worse? Okay, now I, I disagree with that. Tell, How is she on. worse, Tate? Uh, has Joe killed anyone? Good oh, point. That we know oh, of. He yeah. killed, I, I'll tell you who he killed. He killed a bunch of freaking alligators. And he well, killed that guy's uh, million-dollar reality show. Listen. He killed a bunch of heterosexual guys' lives. Hey, he, he was also found guilty of killing some tigers, too. Don't forget that. Killed some tigers? I'm just saying, like, he didn't feed anyone to big cats. That's <laughs> that, that okay, that, but you Tate. can't prove that, Tate. Ethically superior? <laughs> Could we? I mean, listen, I don't know, but I'm on Team Joe over here. Like, you know, I know yeah. Boston's got my back here. All right, so if, if Tate starts growing out a mullet and has like, <laughs> and gets like permanent eyeliner and starts. You know, oh, getting like you. 10 earrings on and, um, you know, tons of like tattoos. We know he's gone full Joe Exotic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has to Sounds have like a good Halloween one. costume. The, the handcuffs on his belt right around the crotch. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good Hold look. on. But remember, unfortunately, when that lady got her arm eaten off at Joe's uh, camp, how did he have time? after somebody got their arm chewed off to run and go find a medic jacket. He's not even right. a medic. I mean, that's, that's like the first sign that this show is going to be bizarre. The next sign is 
the guy smoking a cigarette while filling up a gas tank. <laughs> guy, you I'm, know, like, oh, right. I better buckle in because yeah. I'm going on an adventure. I'm going on a real journey here. It was crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Scott Bossman. A- Wait, go ahead, Tate. Yeah. No, I got, a, I got a question for Scott. Since Scott, you live not far from Big Cat Rescue. How many big cats do you own? How, is this common for people to own big cats down there in the south? Florida man. Well, Florida. Here, hey, Florida man. Uh, it's a very valid question. However, I own zero big cats. Um, okay. You can be my so friend I own still. zero. Okay. Uh, I've never been to the big cat rescue ever. I know where it is. I've driven by it. I uh, thought, like, that's kind of strange. I've never gone there. Um, you know, it's not normal to have that kind of stuff here. But... Um, you know, I, listen, I look, I grew up in Tampa, right? Like I've lived here my entire life. In 1997, when Don, Don, uh, what's his name? Low? Don? No, J- Don uh, Lowell or whatever a guy's name is. The ex-husband, uh, the former mm-hmm. husband, the missing guy. When he went missing, I was living here. And I asked my wife, I'm like, how did we miss this? Like, how did we miss this whole thing? Because I've never even once heard about this whole thing. The mm-hmm. The airport that they found the van at, like I've been there. Like I know right where it is. I, I'm going to start a Tiger King uh, tour of Tampa. You come to Tampa, you can go to scotttodd.net forward slash Tiger King tour. Uh, I'll take a tour. We'll go to the big cat rescue. We'll go Hayes Carroll. We'll go to the airport. We'll go look for Don. I can it. see Scott Todd leading like a group of 30, 30 tourists on like those little Segway tours. Okay, folks. Now, if you just look to the left, we're going to look for allegedly the septic tank where Carol has her husband buried. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Hey, Scott Bossman, like, is, is Carol as bad as Joe? Big Cat Rescue. Is, is Carol as bad as Joe? Uh, so I feel a little bit sorry for Joe. I do not feel sorry for Carol. That's that's the internal struggle I'm having. I don't know. So I think um, I think Carol is more manipulative and just maybe uh, uh, has you know she's just got the evil inside of her, whereas Joe is just a little bit a little bit deranged. And we can all can't. we can all agree Carol's the smartest of all these characters. Yes. She's got them beat by head and shoulders. Master like Martin. she's, she's definitely so much smarter than all of them. Um, even her husband is like a Harvard grad. We, like Scott Todd sent that article on it. Eric Peterson's Carol's bad as Joe. They're about the same. I don't know. They both have. Well, that's their- a yes. If they're, they're just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the next question. <laughs> you don't have to ask this one. You can move on. It was a joke. What? No, 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 no. Here, no. The next question is: Do you think Joe got a bad rap that he got just in over his head? And this Jeff Low is it Lo, Jeff Low. Low, the other guy, the other informant. And uh, the 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 Allen, the supposed hitman for hire, were all three in cahoots to take away the GW Zoo from Joe and get Joe to go to jail. Did Joe get a bad rap, Tate? Yeah, I think uh, I think those guys found themselves in some hot water and they looked for an out, and you know. Poor Joe. I don't think that guy's a, he's no genius. He's no mastermind. And so he didn't see that he was take, getting taken advantage of. That's what I think. Scott Bossman. Uh, although Joe made some very poor decisions, uh, I do believe he was framed in the end. Wow. Interesting. Mimi Schmidt. She's not there yet. We spoiled not it for there her. Yet. It's okay. <laughs> oh, Mimi, I'm sorry. No, Why it's okay. I'm so Mimi. I'm stuck on Ozark still. I got to finish. I'm halfway through, Joe. I'm halfway through, Tiger King. It's all good. Well, we, we, yeah, it's all good. 
Yeah, I'm fine. All, good. All right. Thanks, Tate. Okay, Eric. It it appears that that Joe was framed. Wow. Okay. Um, Scott Todd. Well, jo Joe is not like like has already been said. Joe is not a, a smart cat, right? Like he's not the smartest cat out there. Okay, so he's he he's out there, and then what happens is, I think that he he allowed people in, and they basically they bamboozled the guy, and I think he got framed. I think he got framed, and and look, the reality is though is that. Um, you know, like animal abuse charges. I think that's a serious, that's a serious thing, right? Like they, they found something on them. They had enough evidence to support that piece. Now, did he really try to kill her, Carol's husband? I don't know. I think he got framed on that piece because he really didn't even have the money to go pay anybody. He probably came to some like, you know, it's all talk. You have to want to kill her or whatever. But I'm telling you, man, like there's some, there's something there. Like yeah. does the guy deserve to be in jail? Well, probably. He probably does. He probably abused those animals over a lifetime. I'm not saying that he is not an innocent dude, but at the same time, he's not the smartest dude out there. And I'll tell you what, to, to me, you know, like you got one sleazy guy out there in, in Joe Exotic, and then he attracted another sleazy guy in Jeff Lowe. Like, just listen to the comment that Jeff Lowe made. I don't know if you remember it, but I was like, my, floor, my mouth hit the floor when he said it. He's like, yeah, when she has the baby, She's gonna have to get back in the gym, and we're going to get in a hot nanny. Uh, like, oh yeah. I was like, he did not just say that. And then, if you Google now, hot nanny Jeff Jeff oh, Lowe, hot <laughs> nanny, he did go hire the hot nanny. Like, there's pictures. Like, the hot nanny joined him and his wife. Really weird, awkward kind of a setting. And then beyond that, now it's coming out that hot nanny is a fake. Like, she's a real person, but she's hired part time and just all for the show. Like hot nanny's not necessarily like really working because I don't think the guy Jeff has any money. Right, right. Okay, so Mimi, this is for you. As a woman, the misogyny level in this show has got to be at eleven. Like normally, like in like normal, like really, really toxic, you know, women hating cultures. You could say, oh, that, you know, like, the, like let's, just, let's just pick on Harvey Weinstein, right? He's easy to pick on as far as misogyny. That guy's at 10. I would say collectively, these guys are 11. This one goes to 11. As a woman, how, how do you reconcile watching the misogyny and still being entertained? Well, I feel like Joe Exotic's doing the same thing to men that this other guy's doing to women with all his, his collection. But Joe Exotic hates Carol. How many times can he be like hating Carol and the, the, the women hating just because of her? Well, I think there's, he has a reason for that. I don't think it's because she's a woman. I think that the, their competition is just toxic. It's just gotten toxic. I think she's just baited him too. She's just baited him so much by trying to make herself out to be the good person and him to be so nasty. I don't think it's a man woman thing. Okay. But how about the, you know, Bhagavan? He's, he hardly pays these ga these gals. He's married or with like five women at a time. I mean, the 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 polyamorous relationships. It's, it's almost like the heuristic. If you have a big tiger, then you're going to be with several women at the same time, and everyone seems to be okay with it. Has multiple men, so like it's not like a woman thing. It's a multiple thing, and I don't get it because I thought only multiples were legal in like Nevada. Or Utah, is that no? I don't think it's legal anywhere. Yeah. Is polyg polygamy is not legal anywhere. Isn't it in Utah? I mean, Eric Peterson would know better than all of us. Eric, I don't know the answer to that one. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's very strange. It's Sonia, very that's a joke, by the way. If you listen to the podcasts, Eric would not know <laughs> about polygamy. <laughs> um, Mark. Okay. I think we got. Scott. I think we got a really discuss this one thing though okay yeah, this is serious for halloween for halloween oh my eric i mean because remember we did the halloween show once and mark came as mike zano remember that yeah so my question to eric is eric for halloween are you gonna dress up as this dude jeff Lowe? 
<laughs> like you put the hat on, the bandana, grow a, grow a come on, come on, a goatee. Is, is that in the futures for us or what? No, I think, I think we got to have Tate completely decked out as Joe Exotic. Yes. At a boot camp, right? Like, can oh, you yeah. do that, Mark? Like, that's the requirement oh, for you yeah. to attend the next boot camp. For sure, for sure. I'm going to get some of those fake teeth. I'd, I'd like to come at, as a, at Joe Exotic's, his first husband with like two teeth. Oh God, oh God. And, the, and the, like get some fake tattoos and then on my navel pro- property, exclusive property of Joe Exotic. That's cl- you keep it classy. <laughs> Maybe I can figure out how to dress up like Carol. I don't know. She can pull okay. off Carol, right? Like she can right. do it. Okay, let, let's talk about Carol's husband, Howard, the new husband for a second. Listening to him talk, at what point did you say to yourself or out loud, I'd punch that guy? <laughs> Eric Peterson? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I, if I said that, but uh, I could understand where you're coming from. <laughs> Does Howard have a, one of the more punchable faces and voices <laughs> in the country? It's possible. Mimi? Mm. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Scott Bossman? He didn't bother me that much. I mean, he's a pretty relentless, pretty smart guy. A little annoying, but I don't know if I would have punched him. Scott Todd, you take a swing? I don't think I'd take a swing. I, um, I, he clearly loves Carol. Which, like, I, like I don't know, Mark. Like, I sent you a link over the weekend, and uh, there's a there's a video that he did on the Big Cat, you know, rescue website, and he talked about how great their relationship was. They've never argued. They have a lot of respect for each other. And like, they're that, married. They're married, right? They've never yeah, argued. It's kind of weird, right? Like that. <laughs> so there's some red flags yeah. there. Okay, like I don't know. Is he is he just next in line if the food runs out at the Tiger Place or what? I don't know. Probably. You know, you know what yeah. scared me though? I'll tell you what scared me. Not about him, but about her missing husband is the wedding picture. Did that disturb you guys? I mean, you're going to pick on the wedding pictures as one of the more disturbing aspects of the show. The whole thing's disturbing. I remember Every his, scene's what, disturbing. I remember his ex and his family talking about them being together, how weird it was, but I don't remember the photo. The photos, he's like, he's like on the beach and he's like on, he's like in a tiger outfit and he's like on his hands and knees and she's got a collar around him. I didn't see that. (laughs) I remember that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And she would go to like meet with the congressmen in like total tiger outfits. That's weird, right? It was weird. So, um, all right. Well, last questions before, before we end. Um, there's so many, by the way, but he, is, is it fair to say the heuristic going forward in life is if you own an exotic pet that is dangerous, you might be a, a crazy person. Scott Bossman, you meet me at a party. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? You th- and I'm, oh, by the way, I've got a tiger in my backyard. I love it. You want to see a picture? At, that, at what point would you be like, probably a crazy person? Oh, yeah, right away. For sure. Right away. Mimi? Yes, definitely right away. But didn't Shaq order like two of them from Joe? Yeah. Okay. And now... Based on that heuristic, I don't know Shaq personally. I like him. I think he's a great basketball player. But let's face it, Mike Tyson got a face tattoo. He had tigers. Shaq <laughs> might might crazy. be a little, a little crazy. A little crazy. Eric? If someone told me they had tigers, I think I would um... – be a little cautious, yes. <laughs> like, like, would you have them over for dinner? No. Like, after you got that information, you're like, oh, I don't think I'd tell them where I lived. 
<laughs> yeah. You guys are a nice family. Come on over. Leave, leave the tiger at home, but come on over. We're going to, we're going to do potluck. Um, Scott Todd, how about you? You guys want to come over and see my tiger? <laughs> yeah. I don't have one. So yeah, I, I would, yeah. I would be a little, uh, literary, right? Like I'd be like, okay. It, it's one of those moments where you'd have to like, okay, prove me wrong moments, right? Like here's, it, you, you know, the guy at the table that they put the sign that people like make the meme, like, here's what I think, prove me wrong. Like I, I would be like, you own a, a wild exotic tiger, you in your backyard, something might not be right. Prove me wrong. Like you got to prove me wrong. Okay. Are there, are, are there any, any characters in that show at all? You, you'd be like, Oh, I'd hang out with that guy or gal. Any of them? The reality show with. producer, I'd hang out with him. The reality show <laughs> producer, I'd hang out, yeah. That'd be a funny guy. That dude oh wasted five years of his life. But he the did. stories he has are priceless. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, thanks, uh, everybody. Hopefully, um, you got, got you know entertained by our Tiger King discussion. And... Um, had some insights into land investing as well. Um, so the only way that we're going to continue talking about these crazy reality shows, if you do is three little things, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the .com. We'll send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course, as well as the latest wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right. Mimi Schmidt, are you ready? What's your tip of the week? I am. If you need money, try fundandgrow.com. I have a couple of coaching students that have gone through Fund and Grow to get uh, some cash to fund deals and have had a good experience. They're, well, I don't know, there's a word for this kind of place. They have banks that they go and show your paperwork to and find you a loan. Yeah. Very cool. They're brokers. They're, lo they're loan brokers. Brokers, loan brokers. Yes, thank you. Very cool. All right, fundandgrow.com. Yep. All right, are we are we good? All right, all right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. And wash, wash hands. your hands. See, Eric, Eric got it. Um. That was fun. I really hope a lot of people don't, you know, give us some uh, like hate email based on Tiger King. Well, we did, we did, we did uh, push. In fact, uh, the the limit on that. Like, I mean, we someone in our audience may own uh, a tiger, or they someone uh, one of their relatives might, and we just caught them crazy. Like, think well, about it. but but think about it, like. You know, that they might, if they have enough self awareness, be like, yeah, it is crazy. Like, but do we really care? No, we don't care. It's just, I, th I think sometimes it's, it's, it's got value to hold up a mirror to someone and say, you're probably crazy if you have a 300 pound dangerous animal living amongst you. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I mean, Probably, you know, I mean, yeah. It'd a lot be a lot like if I had a gator in my backyard, right? Well, you'd probably do. That's yeah, true, Mimi. As a pet, does. not just in your backyard, because you probably I mean, have them because in your they live wild. Like if it was right. just, here, go hang out my pool with me. I know. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, but look at look at Bossman's tiger in the background. Oh, that's a cat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Domestic cat. That's like the next podcast. Cat person or dog person? Um, Tate's a cat person. A, a tortoise person. Tortoise person. Yeah, a tortoise Tortoises person. woke up. Turtle. It's exciting. Turtle. Yeah, that is exciting. Wow. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, see everyone next week. Thanks, Mark.